Do you think you'll, uh, you'll do anything with this? So we're right by the Century Bar. This is fantastic. And you're calling this what building? The DPNL. A lot of people call it Bernie's Music. And the reason why Bernie's Music was here for many, many, many decades, uh, after DPNL vacated, Bernie's moved in. There's a big mural on the side of the sucker that you can see. Oh, yeah, I that, think I've seen it, like piano keys and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when was this built? Uh, I believe this was built in 1927. And so if you look, this is the only building I own that has a terracotta facade. And so you have this beautiful, like oh, yeah. yellow and gold with the blue inlay. Beautiful. It's, it's gorgeous. Well, show me something inside. Let's do it, let's go in. So a couple interesting things of note about this space. One thing that you'll notice that you quite probably haven't put your finger on is it feels kind of big, even though it's not huge, right? Right. One of the interesting things about why this feels this way is there's not a column down the middle of it. So this building is 33 or 34 feet on the outside, but it's 33 feet interior span. And it's the only building I have that has a span this big. The day, almost everything that was built post flood is all 18 to 20 foot offset between the columns. This is again, 33 interior. So you, it, gives, it gives like the diner when it's going in here, a much more flexible layout because you don't have all these columns everywhere blocking. Um, your view and, and, and how things can be functionally laid out. So, uh, so nice hardwood floor. <laughs> it did. Yep. So, okay. you know, it's, it's, it's debatable as to whether we can save this or not. W when we can, we do. And if we can't, then we, we do a good job of putting something in that looks similar. Okay. Um, it just nice. kind of depends on what, what, what can happen. So back here you have a loading dock and this is this, what's on the other side of this wall is century bar. C bar. C bar. Yeah. Okay. C bar is right here. When we go up, what we're going to be able to see is that there were parts, I can't believe, I, can't, I don't recall if it's on the second or third floor, but you can see where this used to tie in historically into the Elks building. Okay. So by taking these buildings and connecting them, we're just taking them back to the way they used to be, which is something I love to do. Right. So create that flexibility. So this building's about 13,000 square feet when you add the basement, first floor, second floor, third floor, each floor somewhere around 3,300, 3,400 square feet. That staircase is beautiful. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it's, it's really neat. We're going to leave that intact. We're going to have to adjust the railing a little bit because it's too low for modern code, but the rise is perfect. It's not as nasty as a lot of these places are. I haven't been in this building in a while, but I, lo I love this railing here. Yeah, it's beautiful. See, once it's exposed, look how cool this is. Look, you see the concrete spans that go across. It's I mean, it, amazing. It's a really neat floor. Scott! Scott, you coming up? Dude. Dude. I'm a ninja. It's critical to what we're doing that we, we bring a green kind yeah. of lifestyle to all of these buildings. I think right? we poked right out here yeah, with yeah, Jeremy yeah, yeah. earlier. That's right. You're right. You're right. So the, right over here, that is this is the, the corner uh, apartment that's on the fifth floor of the Elks building, which had the lofted ceilings and it's going to have the lofted kind of bedroom and all that mm -hmm. concept in there. So what's interesting when you look at all these old buildings, it just blows my mind. Like, look at how it's, it's bricked over. They bricked yeah. over the windows, they, they, they closed off the doors and access points. It's just, it's really bizarre to me. You own this parking lot? Yes. Okay, and there's Price Stores? Yes. And that's yours? Yes. And then that's the Journal Herald? And we own that too. Okay. This was awesome. Thanks for showing me the DPNL. No worries. Yeah. What else can we see? So uh, the Price Brothers store is right around the corner. Yeah, I love Price. Right behind you. I yeah. get my suits there, everything. It's good yeah, stuff. It, I absolutely adore all these old pictures. So this is the Price stores, circa 1913, so right after the flood. So this is where we were just at. We have, you know. The fire. Yep. So this is what the flood and the fire left. So the, the, the 124 Dickey building was here, which is the office built, an office building we have. You've got a 100 East 3rd, which is where Century Bar is. So Century Bar is like essentially like right here. Then DPNL, which we were just at moments ago, it was right here. Then you've mm -hmm. got the big, big Brothers, Big Sisters, and then that's the alleyway. That's the lofts, right? That's right. the Beaver Power Building is, is what that's known, known as. Yeah, that's all parking lot now. And then you've, you've got, that's the original architecture that's behind all the aluminum that no one can see, but we're gonna take off and you can see it again. The Gibbons Hotel, do you guys know what that is? That's the old Schwinn building that was torn down that's the hotel that was the, the, the Dayton Grand Hotel. And but look how glorious that entry used to be. I mean, that, that building's gorgeous. This is a letter, a blown up version of a letter that, that John F. Kennedy sent the former owners of the Price stores. What happened is he came and rented a, a tux from the Price brothers and he left money in it whenever he returned the tux. The gentleman here found the money, 
and put it in a letter and they sent it to him. And so then he wrote this letter back as a response and gave him a $25 reward for returning his money that he left in the suit, in the, in the rented tux. So we're on the fifth floor of Price Stores. Yeah. It's amazing. So this is the facade that we always see from the outside, but the brick and the mortar, great shape. It's incredible. Like if you look at it, like when you look at a building that, ha you know, this, this, these bricks are 140 years old essentially, right? Yeah. Almost 140 years old. This exterior, you know, this aluminum was, was placed on this, I believe, in the late 60s. I've heard early 70s, but I believe it was the late 60s. And the story was the owner went to, to France, saw what was going on there with some cool, innovative, sexy designs. Back then, brick and cast concrete was not sexy and wasn't cool him. anymore. Right. It wasn't modern, right? Because, you know, if you think about what was going on architecturally back then. So he came w up with this idea, and they placed this aluminum kind of wavy, um, structure on the outside to modernize the building. So this building is, is constructed out of wood. Uh, most of the structures that I own are all concrete, right? Because they were yeah. built out of the flood. So they were built back to be fireproof and floodproof. This building somehow made it through the flood with its original 1880s construction. This is what is holding up this sucker. It's 14 inch, you know, wood beams. It's pretty, pretty freaking impressive. Well, thank we you so much for showing me the ropes. Man. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. I appreciate Good. the time. Oh.